Welcome, Traveler. In this video, I'm going to present you the Blood Baron, an absolute endgame monster raining blood from the sky and with various incantations and weapon buffs, boosting your damage to levels where even Melania just gets completely obliterated using your weapon art and not hitting her a single time with your actual weapon. Funny part here, if you have the Mimic tier, he's going to be using this weapon art too and you're double spamming people dead. I mean, your Mimic alone is going to be able to destroy everything with this weapon art. The combo we're using here is Mach Wind Spear. So yes, you have to kill Mach with this and that's possible from level 80 onwards with Flame Ground Strength buffing us and Golden Vow with Verize Talismans for bonus bleed damage and bonus skill damage to wipe every boss from the face of Earth. And the way this all works together is quite simple. Before we start a boss fight, you swap your weapon over to your second weapon. That's a dagger. With the dagger, we use the weapon art. That would be Golden Vow buffing us. Then we use Flames Grant Me Strength. Boom. Swap over to our spear, two-handed, Drink a fire damage potion if you want to. Fill up your mana and then walk up to the boss and just use your weapon art. And that's it. You don't even have to do all of this if you don't want to. It's just that doing this multiplies your damage so many times that it goes crazy. At the very end of the video, I'll also introduce you to this rune farm that works way too good with a weapon destroying simply everything zero effort and well with a 30 percent rune talisman just flying you up like crazy i mean this whole thing i did here gave me around 20,000 runes now and well i'll show you where the 30 percent rune talisman is as well step one is acquiring markwin's sacred spear for this you have to kill mark the blood lord which is also the dlc transition point you'll probably have to just touch this hand so you want to kill him anyways level recommendation for this is level 80 to 90 because you have to make it to the mountaintop of giants kill commander nile in the castle soul all the way on the top right and get yourself the other key from the village of the albanorix and with those two parts you can then transport yourself over to the hidden path to the helic tree and grab the teleporter here on the left side to make your way over to Mokwin's palace in order to kill mock easier you can make yourself to the second church of america that is here next to Leondil Town. Very easy to be reached from the Altus Highway Junction Point. And there in this church, you will be invaded by Ilianor. You can get the pole blade there, but that is not the most important item. She also drops you an item for your cracked physique. And that item will prevent Mog's second phase. Mog's annoying, curse, life-sucking damage from hitting you. Here's the church, and down there you'll be invaded to get that. Now this is me with level 93 right now, and you can see there is no need for that even, because you're just Ilianor pole blading, completely destroying Mach. And if you wanna get to this point extremely fast and easy, there's a link to build in the description below to fast track catapult you there and a bonus link for all 10 summer smithing stones so you can get the weapon straight up upgraded. Now, one very important thing to mention about this weapon, it has a strength and an arcane scaling, but the arcane scaling is better. So you want to get the 24 strength and then boost everything else into arcane until you hit 60 arcane, which is the soft cap. Right now at level 122, my spread looks like this, Vigor 45, Endurance 22, Strength 24, and Arcane 60. Yes, with Faith being 15, that I can actually cast Flames Ground Me Strength. Golden Vow to put on your dagger, super simple. You teleport to the War Master Shack in Limgrave, and then we're gonna ride towards Here's the square below the broken bridge. And here on the right side at the five marker is a golden order knight on a horse. And as you kill that one, he just drops the golden vow ash of war. You can then go back to the round table hold and enchant it on a dagger. And it is a dagger because of equipment load. Right now I'm heavy because I'm wearing my golden scarab talisman, but usually a medium load. And if you would have like a sword, axe, or anything there, it would be less convenient, right? And this is the knight we're talking about. Very simple. Donkey doodle dandy andy. 
Golden Vow. Now, the next two items we're looking for is the Lord of Blood Exaltation, which raises our attack power when blood loss occurs in the vicinity, and the White Mask, which also gives us bonus attack power when blood loss happens. And the ability of the weapon does count as blood loss. It even works against blood loss immune opponents because it is actually not blood loss, but it still counts as blood loss for some reason. And that makes the White Mask and the Lord Blood's Exaltation straight up trigger. Step one is teleporting to the Avenue Balcony in Leyendel City. And then you make your way down the stairs, jump over the railing, and then get into the well. And no worries, this part here is a little bit sped up. The complicated roundabout part in the maze I'll do in normal style talk along. After getting that side of grace, go over the floor, roll down the ladder, and then make sure that on that wooden board, you right hit the middle to land on the pipe below. Be careful with the stupid lobsters. They'll try to eat your booty. Roll your way past them and get the next side of grace. Now, here's this little hint. There's two items behind you at the lobsters that you want to get after getting the side of grace. There's a Somber Smithing Stone 7, which is always nice to have. And yes, one of the earlier times you can actually get a Somber Smithing Stone 7. And there's the Shackle for Moog. The same Shackle exists for him as did for Margaret the Fell Omen to make the fight easier for you. Navigating the next part can be stupid. So we're doing a normal pacing style video. You head downwards and this door is closed. Go left. Jump over the altar and get up the stairs. This is where we will return to. But in order to return here, there is a lot of roundabouts to take. After going up the ladder, you see the room? Turn right. There's fire happening. You don't really care for the fire. You're going to let it blast down. And we're not going to the statue. We're going past the statue. On the right. You know you're right when you see the big statue. Then head to the right again, and there's one big dude. You know you're also correct. Jump straight down, turn to the left, straight, turn to the right, stairs up. You want to go the stairs up. See a room in front of you that's empty? Turn around, another one of these. This looks eerily similar to where we have been before, right? <laughs> this time, you go to the connector and head to the statue and bonk it downwards. Bonk. Hit it again and get upwards. You see this altar room with the statue? You're, you're correct. This is where you want to be. Turn to the right again. And if you do notice that these two imps are there, and the pit where you can fall into. You die if you fall in there. You, you're, you're on the correct track. Jump down the ladder. And then make your way straight down. And this is exactly where everything started. Pull the lever. Jump down. Turn around. It goes up. And it goes straight. If we're going straight... You return back to where everything has started. Boom. Then you can rest at the side of Grace and do the boss fight. The boss is Asgar, Priest of Blood, and he has two dogs with him. Now, the dude himself is quite simple because he can actually get staggered, which is quite nice. You should look out, though, because, well, he does have the Reduvia and he does some other shebangs and, well, yeah. But... I mean, the damage he takes is quite significant. And now we finally get the blood loss exaltation for the bonus damage when a blood loss occurs in our vicinity. Next item is at Mox Palace. Right out of the cave, pick up the first side of Grace, the palace approaching Ledge Road. And from there, we'll find some people to invade us. You're exactly writing, I'm here right now, to this point. And next to the Beefy Rock, that point, that's the number three marker. Ask the dudes. Might want to clear them out first if you don't feel comfortable about just running around. You get booped down your horse. Do not 
approached the birds. And a nameless white mask invades you. Now, my weapon is uniquely made to just bully enemies. And it prevents the use of flasks as well. So they can't even uh, heal. That was white mask number one. Now, the next two are happening there and there. So we need to go essentially deeper into the area. As I said, look out for the bird. Like clear it if you want to. But you can also add past it. Ow. Blood boobs. Now I'm getting invaded again as I go up here. There are the doggies. He's behind me. Weapon art. They're a bit annoying, but when at, at this point you should be quite quite powerful, so I don't I don't see you struggling with this at all. And the final one is past that bird. Probably gonna take the left side here. Could go the right side past the doggies, but go the left side. I really don't want to face the birds because <laughs> do you even know how annoying they are? Yeah, funny. And we found him right here past the bird. Now go, go, go around it all the way. Then don't get stabbed by it because you're a bond. And as you kill this nameless white mask opponent, you're getting the full set. The only thing you want, though, is the helmet. Because the white mask does the same thing as the Lord Blood's exultation. So slightly raise attack power when blood loss is nearby. That means I get more attack power with nearby blood loss. And I get more attack power with nearby blood loss. After you acquired those two, Warrior Jar Shard of Alexander. Two choices here. You can actually do his quest line to get a 15% damage version instead of 10%. Or you go to this position on the map, number two, by teleporting to the War Master's Shack in Limgrave in the very beginning. And here you just make your way to the Warrior Jar Alexander and whack his booty out of where he's stuck. Now the thought is... You can get this essentially in the very beginning of the game without any struggles. I mean, this is like five minutes into the game and you can have already the Jar Shard. Whereas if you do his quest, that will be a lengthy endeavor with many, many steps. Here he would be. Here you would get the Jar Shard. It is 10% damage. If you want the 15, put in the bonus effort. Next item is the Old Lord's Talisman. This one gives us 30% more incantation duration or flame strength. And our golden vow just lasts longer during a fight. Very useful. Can be changed out for the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman if you don't want to take more damage. I do like the duration boost though. For this, we're teleporting to Crumbling Ferrum Azula besides the Great Bridge side of Grace. That essentially leads you to Malakith. And there's one of those very, very annoying Dragon Sentinels in front. But instead of... Going to the Dragon Sentinel, you're this time heading downwards in the other direction. Since there is a whole nother part of Fair Mazala to discover. And the funny part is that we'll head into a very annoying room full of these beast men. And it usually has always been... Stupid to go in there because you're surrounded by, well, instantly ex beast man. And that led to some roly poly fiesta. Well, not anymore because the spear quite trivializes many encounters, which I think makes the game a tad easier. But at the same time, it allows you to, well, take a chill pill. And there is the Old Lord's Talisman. Lastly, we're using the Carrion Filigree Crest. And this one is very important because it lowers the FP consumed by skills. Right now, with one mana charge and the talisman, I can do exactly 
six. And the most important one is the third, because that's the longest. As you see, if I do this, that's the longest doing the most damage. And now I can do another three. Without the talisman, I can only do four. Therefore, it is so much more efficient for every flash charge having a bonus of two more. That one you can buy from Master EG. He's at the road to the Rani quest line next to the northern Lernia lakeshore side of Grace. Teleport to him and buy it. It won't be there. I lied to you. It won't be there straight away because he doesn't have it yet. First, you need to go in Limgrave and kill the Bloodhound. Down here, the forlorn Hound Evergale next to the Bridge of Sacrifice. And after killing the Bloodhound, you will clear the Caria Manor and make yourself to Rani. And in Rani's Rise, accept the quest line, talk to every ghost that is in Rani's Rise itself, and then you can go back to War Counselor E.G. after doing all of this. And he'll suddenly sell this little beautiful Carrion Filigree Crest to you. Which works for a lot of builds that are using weapon arts anyways. Now for the Rune Farm. And I think you want this for the DLC anyways. It is the Golden Scarab that is 30% more runes constantly. And that one can be obtained very simple. When I say very simple, I mean there's a super annoying boss fight happening. This is the Ionian Swamp Shore. That's where you teleport. And then we're riding upwards and follow the rocks on the right. You cannot go wrong here because else you, you'll fall down, break your neck and die. Quite simple, to be honest. So we're riding alongside this and there will be a cave. Now this cave has a few specialities. The cave will inflict you with Scarlet Rod, and the cave will, on top of that, try to poison you. And you should probably bring a torch, if you're not a complete, literal idiot like me, who goes in there without a torch, and just clings to walls like an absolute moron. Now, you saw the statue, Volcano Manor statue there, right past everything. Look down, and suddenly we're here. There's the telescope. Down there was the Ionian Swamp Shore, and we're right here. There's this circular thing on the map. And now we just fell down instead of jumping properly over. In order to jump properly over, you head to the left and then go from these rocks. And you always make the jump. And there will be a side of grace for you to grab straight away. And now I won't be speeding through this. We'll do this slow so you don't get lost in the cave. Let me activate my little lantern. Now, I told you there is Scarlet Rod there, right? You could do the standard just walking. You could also do the I turn backwards and then I do this to enhance. You get left side past the maiden and head into the cave. Have your potions at the ready because I just refuse to take any clearing materials. You head downwards, have this explode. Go to the right, past the weird-ass fungal mancers, and make sure that they don't actually poison you. And now it begins with darkness. I mean, you could do this in utter darkness as well, but we don't want to do that. Straight past, turning right, getting into a big cave with even more scarlet rot and a giant flower. Ignore giant flower by going up on the right again. Upwards, jump, and then into this tiny cave and straight up into the boss fight. Which technically could be hard if you wouldn't be having Mockwind Spear and just completely obliterate these gentlemen and tear them into pieces. And then we do teleport to Mockwind's Palace again to the Palace Approach Ledge Road. Now equip yourself your Golden Scarab that you just earned. And we're currently at 97,000 runes. And you just walk in the middle of all of this. Weapon Arn. And yes, all these tiny ones give two and a half. Everything gives two and a half thousand, right? You have another one. When he's going to roll into you. Try to kill you. You don't give a damn. You kill everyone. And we're at 124,000. 
And I even missed two here, I think. So we could just quickly kill them. Yeah, that's 100. <laughs> and then you just teleport back and do it again. I mean, this is one of the more convenient, non glitch, non nothing rune farms. You could even get yourself a pickled fowl's food to get a 30 and a 30, so even more. But yeah, this is truly when it comes down to just getting tons of. I mean, literally tons of runes, right? Kind of like 20,000 per rotation. Oh, these poor lads did actually survive. I'll be having that. It's actually 30,000 per rotation, right? I mean, it's quite simple. Watch a movie. Do this. Get a millions of runes. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the Bloody Baron. Now, if you want to get every single upgrade material, every single smithing bell, somber smithing bell, so you can <coughs> so you can upgrade whatever weapon you want for the DLC. Here's the video that has all the locations safe for you. Pick him up. Do it now.